Becky G. How you doing, Becky? I am so good. Thank you so much. Cool. So last week we had uh, Jalen Rose and we spoke about his school and the importance of education and like the important topic today of voting. So super happy to have you and continue that conversation. So because it's Latinx Heritage Month, uh, we're going to have either, you know, do the whole conversation in Spanglish. <laughs> and Love yes, it. I'll let her take it away. I'm going to stop my video. Pues como dijo mi colega Omar, yo me llamo Aida, eh, formo parte del equipo de social media de JD Finish Line y es un placer tenerte con nosotros, Becky, muchísimas gracias. No, gracias a ti. <ríe> bueno, para comenzar la conversación queríamos hablar sobre tu podcast en la sala. Eh, sabemos que esta semana tuviste unas invitadas increíbles, dos mujeres increíbles a América Ferrera y a la candidata a la vicepresidencia por parte del Partido Demócrata, la senadora Kamala Harris. Eh, queríamos ver si nos podías dar unas highlights de la conversación y hablarnos un poco sobre la importancia de votar este año. Sí, pues eh, quiero empezar primeramente con la importancia de votar. Y eso fue mi, mi inspiración de, de ese episodio en mi podcast con, con Amazon, porque sentí que, pues, estos son conversaciones que aunque los vemos en las noticias, los vemos por las redes, eh, la acción es lo que falta en nuestra comunidad. Y también educarnos. Y a veces, como todas las comunidades eh, de color, siento que nosotros no tenemos el mismo acceso a la información que necesitamos para tener esas conversaciones. Entonces decidí, este episodio vamos a dedicar totalmente a educarnos y tener las conversaciones que a veces no son cómodos. Y por eso eh, eh, la conversación con, con Senator Harris um, fue como un momento muy grande para mí porque aunque todos dicen, sí, tú eres cantante, tú eres esto, tú eres esto, eh, quería ser más ejemplo de ser like a good citizen and show people that like, Although we see politicians as the people in power, the most powerful position that you can be in is to be the citizen and to ask the questions that aren't easy to ask sometimes. And that's also something that we spoke about with America. O sea, su pasión eh, en este mundo de, del mundo político fue como algo que me inspiró mucho desde niña. Y ella, a ella no le importaba si, si la industria le, le decía que ella no debería involucrarse en esos, eh, esos tipos de cosas. Y eso nos dice todo el tiempo. Eh, todavía me dicen, tú eres cantante, ¿por qué estás hablando sobre estos temas si no es tu lugar? Y yo creo que sí es mi lugar, porque al final del día soy humana. Soy hija, soy hermana, soy eh, nieta, soy una buena persona que quiere mejor para, para nuestro eh, país. Y yo creo que eso es lo que me inspiró más que nada, enseñar a la gente que mi voz es más grande que cantar canciones, pero hablar sobre estos temas. Y pues los highlights. I mean, Senator Harris and America Ferreira on the third episode of my podcast. Like, I felt so honored and, and so excited. And it was very tough, you know, preparing for the kind of interviews that it was going to be because I wanted to, you know, be welcoming and receptive and have the conversations. But at the same time, there's this, um, this, this need to understand and, and to want to trust, you know, especially with Senator Harris. And I think that um, we had a really lovely conversation. And I think she really spoke to a lot of the issues in our communities that we are concerned about. Um, when it comes to healthcare for our uh, minority communities, when it comes to immigration and having a pathway to citizenship um, for our family members. Because I know for me, you know, I have a not immediate family, but I have a mixed status family. You know, I have family members um, that, you know, live every day in fear, you know, either in fear, waiting for someone to show up to their door or praying on a miracle that someday, one day, that fear would no longer exist. And so that those were things that meant a lot to me that we, we touched on. And I also had the opportunity to, you know, ask her and address the, um, what is it called? Uh, record, her record as a, as a prosecutor, because that was actually one of the first things that I was introduced to via social media, um, which wasn't the most positive, um, you know, type of, of record that, you know, people were highlighting and saying, um, 
you know, that that history has contributed to a lot of areas that also affect our minority communities. So I really appreciated her being able to address that as well. Y con América, pues, eso fue más como una conversación entre hermanita y hermana en preguntar a ella cómo lo hace, um, también uh, sus ideas, cómo ella empezó en este mundo um, del mundo político, porque obvio no es fácil, a veces es, eh, me siento muy tímida, me siento como que Ay, voy a decir algo que no es correcto o no es bien o que la gente no le va a gustar, pero es mejor tratar y aprender que nada. Y, y yo creo que eso fue one of the highlights of our conversation is like, it's important to start. Just start wherever you are. No importa donde estás, donde estés, you can, you can start. Claro, y mira, como, como latina quería agradecerte también por usar tu plataforma para hablar sobre estos temas tan importantes, porque realmente que toma bastante como que courage salir y, mm -hmm. y poder hablar sobre estos temas. O sea que muchas gracias. Um, pues y nos lleva la, al próximo tema, que es la, pues la comunidad latina se dice que tendrá como un papel muy importante en las elecciones de este año. Uh -huh. eh, ha, han hablado mucho del poder latino y en particular del voto de la mujer latina. Uh -huh. eh, ¿Qué opinas tú al respecto? Pues es muy claro que somos muchos, ¿no? <ríe> la sí. comunidad latina somos muchos. Eh, y hablamos eh, de esto también, yo y América, que, que nuestros números son grandísimos, pero si dicen que los números importan, ¿qué importan nuestras vidas al final del día? Porque no son números para nosotros, son vidas. Eh, son nuestros hijos, son nuestros padres, son nuestros estudiantes, las personas que están trabajando cada día durante la pandemia. O sea, nosotros esta vez en esta elección, porque vamos a tener tantos latinos que van a poder votar por la primera vez. I think in, in total it's like 32 million Latinos will be able to vote um, this election. And there's a lot of first time voters um, that are going to be joining us. Some of my siblings being um, being some of them. And it's it's very true. I think we we have the power to be deciders in, in where this is going to end, you know? Totally. Yeah, I definitely agree. Youth plays such a big role in this and it's mm -hmm. going to be very interesting as well, which leads us actually to our next question of youth and participation of youth in the electoral process. ¿Cuál es la importancia que tú ves en la juventud también participando en este proceso, proceso electoral? You know, yo creo que para mí, porque yo soy la más mayor de cuatro hijos y tengo dos hermanos que van a poder votar um, en esta elección y yo los veo tan educados, tan preparados y eso me da um, mucha inspiración y mucha fe porque creo que estas generaciones eh, que van a poder votar por la primera vez, ellos saben. O sea, yo creo que para mis abuelitos, para mis papás, no que no era importante para ellos antes votar en estos tipos de elecciones, pero esta vez es como que tenemos más acceso a la información y para decidir. Y yo me recuerdo la primera vez que yo fui a votar y yo me sentí como muy, I don't know, I was, I felt so much pressure. I like, it, it was daunting. I was like, wow, I'm really recognizing what a huge responsibility this is just now in this moment. And I walked away from it feeling like I want to do so much better next time. And I think that being honest about that and letting first time voters know that it is going to be scary. Um, they do make it really hard. I think one of the biggest challenges that we fight is the literacy. Como que estoy leyendo esto y creo que está diciendo esto, pero I'm not sure, you know, mm -hmm. and that's like, that's a very real thing, you know, and it's not that, be, you know, we're not smart or that we're not intelligent. They just make it really intimidating and they make they use big words and they use you know and so if there's anything that you can do like I know that there's places um I think it's ballot ready ballot ready is uh, you can put like where you live and what things interest you and what you're passionate about and then it can explain to you um what your ballot in your state is going to look like and what things align with you and what you're hoping for and to accomplish as a voter 
And I think that those are the kinds of things that I want to encourage everyone to do for first time voters is like really prepare yourself for what that ballot is going to look like. Um, because that will make sure that you are doing your part to the fullest of your abilities. That's super cool. And we're, uh, we'll look into uh, incorporating some of these resources as well into our blog so people can take a look at where they awesome. can go and educate themselves more. Um, now, as you know, right now we're in Latin Heritage Month. Mm -hmm. uh, queríamos saber un poco sobre la importancia de tener un mes este, dedicado como que para nuestra comunidad, nuestra cultura. I feel like every day is a day to celebrate our Latinx heritage, you know? Obviamente, it's nice to have a month, but this should be 365 days a year for anyone about wherever they come from. You know, I think that when I look at our commun communities of color and how far we've come and all of the things that we continue to overcome, that, you know, the barriers and the walls that have been put in our way um, to fail and to not be successful, and we still are here, and we continue to be here. Like, estamos presentes más que nunca. And I think that that's so beautiful. So for me, celebrating, you know, our our heritage and our history and learning more about it, porque te digo honestamente, um, there's, there, I've, I don't think I've ever been more curious about who I am and where I come from. You know, I always knew, yo soy Mexicana, Americana, yo soy super orgullosa de ser de Inglewood, you know, from, you know, Cali girl for life and super proud of that. But I always say I'm the 200%. I'm 100% proud to be from Inglewood, but I'm also 100% proud to have that, you know, that sangre dentro de mí that's like so proud to be Mexicana. And I think that a lot of us can share that feeling of pride, you know, that feeling of pride. And I think that that's definitely fueling me in how I use my platform, you know? I totally get it. I'm the same way. I'm Venezuelan American and I'm, I always lead with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hay que tener mucho orgullo, siempre. Yeah. <laughs> um, y finalmente queríamos hablar un poco sobre el Latino Community Foundation. Eh, sabemos mm -hmm. que es una organización muy importante para ti. Quería que nos dijeras un poco sobre el trabajo que hacen para la comunidad latina y para la comunidad en general. Latino Community Foundation is actually so in this episode that we did for in la sala my podcast um, that is one of the missions of the podcast and one of the conditions that I went into for the podcast was if we're going to talk about the culture we got to give back to the culture um, because that's how we make progress that's how we create change even if it's just if it's just a little semita like we can still be in control of doing our part. And I think that that's what a lot of the organizations that we donate to each episode, um, that we dedicate each episode to, we try to highlight community-focused organizations, grassroots organizations um, that maybe don't get the same support than like a major organization that is global or is that, that is on a, on a nationwide um, type of exposure. And so Latino Community Foundation is really awesome because it exists to unleash the power of Latinos here in California, which as I mentioned before, like I'm a very proud Cali girl. And I think that they really do fulfill their mission by building like a movement and trying to engage their youth to be more philanthropic, to be leaders within their own communities, within their own streets and um, create these conversations around politics and have them feel comfortable enough to participate in them, feel educated and empowered by those conversations. And so that's why I decided like, that Latino Community Foundation is a really great place to donate to because of that, because it's community focused. And I think that we should start, I, I, I'm never one to say we should think smaller, but it's really scary when you're one person, the idea of helping the entire world you almost feel like it's pointless because you're like, well, what, what, what good is my tiny little self if I can't help the whole world? But really, you can inspire the whole world if you start within your own four walls and you start within your family and the conversations that you have at home and then how that trickles out into your streets and your community and your cities and then on a state level. And then it just, it grows, you know, so. That's why I wanted to dedicate this to Latino Community Foundation as well, because I think that them encouraging that growth within, you know, our youth to empower them with education, I think it's incredible. That's so true. Um, 
it all starts in the community. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, uh, this is probably the funnest part of our Community Voices series. Um, I'm going to invite my colleague Omar back on for this. First off, that was like such a beautiful conversation. Like I know a oh, little bit of Spanish, you. so I could pick up a little <laughs> thing. So, you know, just to have that, you know, that dialogue and back and forth, especially with such important topics and things that are so passionate to you. That was a beautiful thing to hear. And um, yeah, we know we love you here at JD Sports and Finish Line. So we definitely want to be a part of what you're doing with the In La Sala podcast, which you can find on Amazon Music. So I want to pull out the checkbook real quick and donate 20000 to Latino Foundation. You know, big checks. So Big checks. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So I know they'll appreciate it as much as they appreciate you. And thank you for taking the time out again. Um, and I also heard you became a part owner of a sports team. That's right. So, so tell Yo. me about that. <laughs> I'm still processing it. A young girl from Inglewood who had a dream and I'm still working so hard to continue to grow that dream. Because the truth is, is like, you know, there's never this feeling of like, oh, I'm satisfied. Like, I'm good now. I made it. Like, I feel like I'm still just barely mm -hmm. scratching the surface on all the things that I would hope to accomplish in my career. But really, like, one thing that I've been, it sounds really funny. And I was, oh, my God, it's going to be so cheesy. But, like, what does the G in, like, Becky G stand for, right? Like, everybody jokes. And it's like, because you're a G, because you're a gangster, because you're <laughs> this, because you're that. And I'm like, you know what? I've decided, like, the G stands for giving. Like, I really do take so much pride in being able to give the best of myself and give back to my community. And what was really cool about Angel City was it wasn't, it wasn't a, a, a boss move that I was trying to make. It was this little girl in me that grew up in my city that knows that when I was playing soccer, not that my professional career was going to go anywhere, <laughs> I would have played differently knowing that there was even the slightest possibility that I could play for a pro female football club in my city, mm -hmm. but it didn't exist. And here was this incredible opportunity to be a part of something so much bigger than me that was really going to focus on giving back one to my city, to the communities in, in, in the city of Los Angeles, but then also give back to um, people who are not as fortunate or give back to women in sports who we all know we still have strides to make yeah. um, in, in as, far, as far as equality goes, you know, and, and, and breaking, you know, whatever industry standards are that are not fair to show and be leaders. And like that for me, I was just like, man, like literally the little girl in me is still freaking <laughs> out. Cause I was like thinking to myself, like, there was, there's, there's so many, um, you know, young girls out there that I hope can see themselves in this team and feel like they can be identified, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it gives yeah. them something to uh, aspire to now that they see it's, you know, it's there in front of them and it's real. Totally. Exactly. And, and that's the truth. Like, I feel like, especially when you grow up in neighborhoods, like the one I grew up in. You know, a lot of people, they got a lot of things to say about it. Like, you know, oh, Inglewood up to no good, which like <laughs> every neighborhood, honestly, every neighborhood like has its good sides, has its bad sides. It doesn't matter what part you go to. We know LA's, LA County is really big, you know, but it doesn't matter what, what parts of LA you go to. When you look a certain way or if you speak a certain way, you know you're going to be treated a certain way. And I specifically say that for like our communities of color and like, we are changing that. Like the fact that I get to be a part of something so big and be on a board of boss, talented, like very accomplished yeah. women. Like I want anyone who comes from where I come from to see themselves there too and know that it's not impossible, you know? Right. So that that for me is just like it's just the dopest, illest part of it all, and the, the part that I get like a jersey with my name on it. That I'm also really <laughs> excited about that too. Nah, that's, that's exciting. Awesome. Super proud of you too. 
And thank yeah, you. we want to thank you for taking the time out and shout out to your team as well for you know helping this come into fruition. Um, definitely they need to get their love and their flowers. So shout out to them. They are the best. Honestly, when you talk about like who you surround yourself with, this is also something I just want to share to like anybody who can see us and how we do what we do. Like it's really all about how, who you surround yourself with. And like those people are an extension of you. And I just believe like if you're a good person, you're going to attract good things and and you're going to attract really good people. And I'm so happy to say that about my team because I, I feel the same way. They're, they're pretty awesome. Yeah. They're pretty cool. Yeah. Keep them close. <laughs> Keep them close. Yes. Cool. So that's a wrap for this episode of Community Voices. You know, I appreciate everybody tuning in. And make sure you tune in to In La Sala on Amazon Music. Best podcast out there right now especially with the amazing Thank guests you. we just had. And yeah, tune in to next week. Very big episode next week. So looking forward to that. And thank you again for your time. Thank you guys so much. No, a ustedes, muchísimas gracias. Y a todos los fans, I love you.